So last question, and that has to do with the source of energy in the future. You're looking at uh, 2100. Where is our energy coming from in that time? Would it be nuclear energy? Would it be solar energy? If you take a look at the raw numbers, solar power is more expensive than oil and coal. You realize that oil and coal are, in some sense, concentrated sunlight. Sunlight since the time of the dinosaurs. That's hard to beat. Pound for pound, oil and coal have more joules of energy than what you get in a battery. However, that's changing. Every year, batteries, solar energy, conservation, wind power get more efficient, get more economical. Every year, gasoline, fossil fuels get more expensive. Now, the two curves are like this now. But in 10 years' time, we think they will cross. At that point, it becomes obvious that solar, hydrogen, wind power is just as cheap as fossil fuels. And that could cause a sea change because the marketplace will go in the other direction. And even beyond that, there's a possibility of fusion power. Now, fusion power should not be confused with fission power. What's causing the meltdown in Japan is nuclear waste. Nuclear waste is hot, even after you shut off the reactor. That's what causes meltdown, the nuclear waste. Now, <clears throat> fusion does not yet exist, it's hypothetical. But by 2020, we hope to have the first fusion reactor operating. And by mid-century, who knows? This is a big question mark. We may have fusion power, which uses seawater as its basic energy source. And the waste from a fusion reactor is helium gas, which is actually economically useful. But let's be honest, at the present time, it doesn't yet exist. So my personal point of view is that in 10 years' time, market forces alone will push a solar, hydrogen, wind era. Any advice you want to give to our audience? Anything you'd like to add? When I was young, in high school, my advisor was Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb. He, in fact, arranged for me to get a scholarship to Harvard. He was pro-nuclear, very pro-nuclear. He wanted to use bombs to dig out Panama canals and things like that. But he had a philosophy about commercial nuclear energy. His philosophy was that commercial nuclear energy is so unstable, so dangerous, it does not belong on the surface of the Earth. It belongs underground. Now, if that reactor in Japan were underground and a tsunami hit, no problem. You just put a manhole cover on the reactor and walk away from it. But when you put them above ground, that's 100 tons of uranium dioxide. That could melt and spew enormous quantities of nuclear waste into people's backyard. So Japan has made the Faustian bargain. Faust was the mythical figure who sold his soul to the devil for unlimited power. So Japan does not have fossil fuels, no oil, no coal, very little hydro. So Japan has made the Faustian bargain. The question now facing President Obama and the United States of America is, what should we do about the Faustian bargain? We saw what could happen when a once in a hundred year event happens in your lifetime. It could cripple your entire economy. And so nuclear, which was once thought to be too cheap to meter, has to be looked at a totally different way in light of this. Germany has already stated that it's not going to revive nuclear. It's going to shut down its nuclear power plants like it was going to anyway. Germany is always already stating that. So in America, there's going to be a debate. There's going to be a debate about global warming, a debate about fossil fuels, and a debate about energy and what price do we pay? Do we sell our soul to the devil for unlimited power? Thank you very much. Okay.